Bless this morning. Bless your word, Lord, as it comes. Bless your word, O oh God. Bless your word, Jesus. Bless your word, Jesus. Bless your word, Jesus. Bless your word, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Just, just lift your hands to the Lord. Thank you. Just thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you this morning. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise, Lord. We bless you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your word this morning as it comes. Amen. Amen. Please have your seats. Uh, thank you, Lord. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Are you ready for God's word? Yes. Well, I said, teach me, Laura. Teach me, Lord. Your word. Your word. Amen. Amen. My mother had six children. 
the first child pass away. I'm number two. Mm -hmm. Then after me, there were two other boys, James and Ralph, who many of you know who lives in Houston. And then after Ralph, two other kids pass away. The two last pass away. So my mom and six children, three are alive and three are dead. I was probably about 10 or 11 years old when my, last, my mom last child passed away. And I remember very clearly that my mom cried. She really, really cried. She really cried. Because she had been in labor for several days. And then to go and have a still birth was so painful for her. So she cried. She really cried. When I got married, I know that uh, one time my wife was pregnant for three months and we had a miscarriage. And that was very painful for my wife and for me as well. Amen. Amen. When something you love is wrestled from your hands, when something you like is taken away from you, it's very painful. Hallelujah. Amen. In the passage we read this morning in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible tells us that God said, let us make man kind in our image, in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image, and in the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The words of the Lord. And so we see in this passage that God made man in his likeness. And God's purpose for making man in his likeness, according to this passage, was for man to have dominion. Amen? Amen. For man to have dominion. Dominion means sovereign power. Dominion means supreme power. Dominion means to rule, to reign, to govern. That's what dominion means. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I'm glad that this year our team is dominion and recovery. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I don't want you to mistake them because many times when we talk about dominion, people think in terms of power. Amen. And especially about our power over the enemy, the devil. And that's true. But I believe that it's more than just that. Amen? Amen. It's, it's more than just power. It's, just, it's more than just giving you all the material stuff that you lack. Because many times we talk about dominion, people think about material things they want. Money they want. Clothes they want. Houses they want. Shoes they want. Education they want. Hallelujah. But what I want to bring to you this morning is that God's heart was broken when God's creation was ripped away from him. God's heart was broken. Because God did not make man for man to sing. God made man so that man would lay for the praise of his glory. Amen. 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 That's why God made man. That man would lay for the praise of God's glory. Amen. And there God is, he's watching. And his creation has been ripped away from him by the enemy. Just as my mom lost her kids, mm. and I know it was painful, mm. just as we lost our own kid to mm. miscarriage. And I know many of you here sitting here this morning may have lost something in your life. Amen. 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 And part of what we lost, or God lost at the time, 
was the dominion that he had given man. The Bible tells us when God made man, he gave him dominion. He said, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every creeping things, and over everything that I have made. Have dominion. You are the one. I'm going to put you in charge. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you've been here for our Bible studies, I'm sure you probably know that we have said that dominion resides where? Dominion resides in the image of God. Amen? The Bible tells us God made man in his image. In his image of God, he made man a woman. So the ability, the God-likeness in us came from God's spirit. Can I hear a big amen to that? The God-likeness in us came from God's spirit. And so the Bible tells us that in Genesis 2-7 that God made man from the dust of the earth. And the Bible says God breathed into man the breath of life and man became a living soul. Amen? amen. A living being. Because God breathed his spirit. Ruah. God, when he made man, he breathed, who? Oh. And man became a living soul. And so when man took that authority and dominion that God had given him and gave it to Satan, God was heartbroken. Now you're a big amen. amen. But I thank God that because he's the almighty God, that no matter what happens, he finds a way. Amen? amen? He finds a way. And so God planned a recovery. Amen? amen? God planned a recovery. And that recovery was planned by God to be executed. You see, when God made Adam and Eve in the garden, God made Adam and Eve a living being. And Adam and Eve needed to, they needed to depend on God coming down to talk to them every day to re-energize their spirit. Amen? Amen? It's like if you have a battery and you need to recharge it. So every time God came, what did God do? God recharge Adam and Eve. And so the day God stopped coming, what happened? There was a disconnection. The battery could not be recharged anymore. The battery was disconnected from God. Amen. And there were anything in the freezer. When you disconnect the freezer from the wall, whatever is in it is bound to get rotten. Yes. And that's what happened. And so when man was disconnected from God, everything in man died. Everything in this world was subject to the, de to the, to the devil. Amen. So much so that by the time we hit Genesis chapter 6, we begin to read. And it made God sad. And God would grieve that he had made man. Because every inclination of men, the Bible says, was all, was evil all the time. Why? Man without God. Man without God is depraved. Man without God is sinful. Man without God is powerless. Hallelujah. Amen. And so there God is. His plan had been disrupted. His creation had been taken away from him. The people that he made for himself, for himself have been taken away from him. And so God had to do something to restore the dominion that he gave us. Hallelujah. Amen. And I hear a big amen to that. Amen. Now, I've been here for the past couple of weeks. I think I have said that there are three levels of dominion. There are three levels of dominion, or three arenas of dominion. Number one is stewardship dominion. Amen? Amen. Stewardship dominion. Can somebody say stewardship dominion? Stewardship dominion. Number two, we have productive dominion. Productive. Amen? Amen? How many dominions? Three. 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 Number one? Stewardship. stewardship dominion. Number two? Productive. Number three? Redemptive. redemptive. Amen. Amen. So we have three kinds of dominion that I want to talk about today. Number one is stewardship dominion. Number two is productive dominion. And number three is redemptive dominion. Amen. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? Yeah. 
Now, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, Then the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Amen. Amen. Man became what? A living Amen. being. Now, let's go to verse 15. Have you seen Genesis chapter 2? The Bible says, The Lord took the man and put him in a garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. Amen. Amen. Now, I will read that again. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to do what? To work it and to do what? To take care of it. Call that stewardship dominion. Amen. Amen. Stewardship dominion. God made his creation and he gave it to Adam to manage it for him. Amen. Amen. To be, he gave it to Adam to be a caretaker. And, may I, want, and I, want to, I want to remind you this morning that wherever you sit this morning, God has given you something to take care of. Amen. Amen. God has put something in your care. God has put a charge on you to keep. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, God has put a charge on you to keep. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope you believe it. The Bible says, and the Lord commanded, verse 16, the man, you are free to eat from the tree in a garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will suddenly die. Verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Amen. Amen. Now, part of God's dominion for man did not include the woman. Man, are you hearing me? God did not make woman for us men to dominate. Women were created to work alongside us as co-creator, co-managers. Amen. Amen. God made our wives, our women, our mothers to co-create with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 19 says, now the Lord God has formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. Say productive dominion. Productive dominion. Amen? Amen? So you see, God gave, God gave the creation to Adam to manage. We call that stewardship dominion. And then God told Adam, Adam, you see, listen, I have made these things, but the creation is not yet complete. I made them, I did not give them means. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want you, Adam, to give all these living things me, because I am bringing you along with me so that we can both be one, co-creators together. Amen? Amen. I'm not asking you to create anything, but I'm asking you to take what I have created and make it better. Are you following? Yes. Are you following? Yes. I'm asking you to take what I have created and make it better. I am I'm, I'm asking you to take what I have given you, the gift I have given you, so that you can make it bigger. Amen? Amen? I want you to get all the talents that I've given you to expand it. I want you to use your spirit, the spirit that I put in you. I want you to use that spirit so that you can imagine new things. Amen. Are you following this morning? Yeah. Are you following this morning? Yeah. Amen? Amen? So that's what God has done. So that's what God did. So in making us caretakers, in making us stewards, God put things in our care to manage. God wants us to preserve his creation. God wants us to maintain order in his creation. Are you a big amen to that? Amen. Are you a big amen to that? Amen. Another example I can give of this is, you know, we have the three primary calls. I don't know the three or four primary calls, right? Red, blue, and what? Yellow or something? Whatever it is. Amen? 
But the idea is that you can take those primary colors and mix them and do what? And make other colors. You know what? What God has done is He has given all the primary colors and said, Yoni, now it is your time. Take the primary colors, mix it up, and create more colors for me. Are you following? Amen. That's what God has called us to do. And what God wants to do, they said, with all of us, is God wants to take us patient and bring us into this realm of dominion. Amen. 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 And God wants to empower us so that we can be king to walk in that dominion. Yeah. Not just to worship dominion, but also you what? To talk to dominion. Amen? Amen. But I want to spend most of my time this morning to talk about redemptive dominion. Because when Adam and Eve fell in sin in the Garden of Eden, and I want to take my time this morning, I don't want to talk too much and preach too hard. I just want to teach Right? Love, love, love. Amen? Amen. When, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, what they did was they took picture, they took the, the leadership position that God had given them. They took it and subjected it to the enemy. Amen. They took it and imprisoned it to the enemy. And so until Jesus until Jesus Christ came to die for our sins, everything on this earth was under the rulership of the devil. Amen? Amen. Including men. Amen. And many times when God will feel sorry for people, he will allow his Holy Spirit to come on them so that they will do his work. But the opportunity for God to mass produce people with the Holy Spirit was not yet available. Pastor Esther. Amen? Amen. So that's why God sent Jesus. God sent Jesus to redeem all of his creation. Can I hear a big amen to that? Amen. God sent Jesus to do what? To redeem all of his creation. Now let me back up to say God has two interests. If I want to ask you, what is God up to? God is up to two things. Amen? Yeah, man. Two things God is up to. Number one, God wants, Pastor Esther, to create a people of his own. God wants to create a godlet line that goes right back to him. That's God's desire. Amen? Yeah, man. God wants to create a people. He wants to bring a people that he can call, these are my people. These are the people I love. These are the people I'm going to cherish. These are the people I'm going to invest myself in. Amen? Amen. Yeah, man. That's what God wants to do. So when you go back to the Old Testament, what was God trying to do? God chose a man called Abraham and told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make it into a nation. I'm going to make you into our people. And your children, your descendants will be my children. I will take them like my own. Amen? Amen. That was physical. But when Jesus Christ came, God said, okay, now I can go beyond the Jews. Now I can go to all people in the world. I can go to Liberia, I can go to Korea, I can go to China, I can go to the Philippines, I can go to South Africa, I can go to Ghana, and Guinea, and Sierra Leone, and I can make people for myself. Are you following? Yes. Yeah. So what is God up to? God wants to create a people that he can call his own. Are you following? Yeah. What is God up to? God wants to create a people that he can call. These are my people. These people belong to me. Are you following? Yeah. Are you following? Yeah. That's the first thing God is up to. The second thing God is up to, patient, God wants to bring all creation on earth and in heaven, God wants to bring all of it under one authority. And that authority is the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I hear a big amen to that? Amen. 
two things God is up to. God wants to create a people for himself. Number two, God wants to bring everything under the power and the authority of Jesus. And here we amen. And because of that, man, we human beings, we are very important to God. We are very important in the plans of God. That's why when, even when God made the first word, he put man there so that man could manage it. Amen. But when the enemy came and took over the whole control and spoiled everything. And God said, okay, now you, the devil, you came and spoiled everything, but I will recreate everything. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. I will re do what? I will recreate everything. Why? Because I want to bring back my people to me. And I want to bring back my creation to me. That's what I want to do. And because I want to do this, I am going to do something so that I can bring my people back to myself. Are you following? Yes. That's why when you read the book of Peter, it says we are a royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. We are people of God's possession. And it's not just in Peter, it's all through scripture. In fact, I have some scriptural references for you. Let me see if I can find them for you. Hallelujah. Amen. That is God's plan. Can I hear a big amen? amen. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Can I hear a big amen? Amen. 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 Now, help me. Somebody help me here. Let's just read a few of these verses. I want somebody to read Titus 2 14. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Another person read for me Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10. Titus 14. 2, 14. 14. Yes. Who gave himself for us mm -hmm. that he might redeem us mm -hmm. from every lawless deed yes. and purify for himself, mm -hmm. his own special people, mm -hmm. zealous of good works. Amen. Amen. So God wanted to do what? To create for himself, right? A special people. And when you look at these special people, what are they zealous for? For good works. Ephesians 2.10 tells us, it says, for we are God's workmanship created. Right? Before the foundation of the world. To do what? To do good works. Which God has ordained for us to do. Amen. So God is interested in calling out a special people patient. And God wants to empower them. So that they can go and do what? Good works. In Matthew it says. Let your light so shine among men. That they may see your good works. And do what? And glorify your father in heaven. That's God's plan. And you're a big amen. amen. So when we're talking about dominion, that's the that's the light, that's the, that is the angle from which we're coming from. Yes. God is giving us dominion, not so we can look important. God is giving us dominion because of the plan He has to create a people for Himself. Amen. Are we following? Amen. Are we following? Yes. Okay, good. Now let's read Ephesians chapter one, verse ten. Ephesians chapter one, verse ten. Can somebody read that for me? Ephesians 1.10 That in the dispensation That in the dispensation Of the fullness of the time In the fullness of time He might gather together in one He would gather together in one All things in Christ All things in Christ Both which are in heaven Those that are in heaven And which are on earth And those that are on earth In him Christ In Christ Amen? Now go to 19. Go to 19. Uh, right. Go to 19 and read for me. You see chapter 1. Verse. And what is the exceeding greatness? And what is the exceeding greatness? Of his power towards, of his power towards us. Believer. Uh -huh. Let us believe according to the working of his mighty power. Yeah. Go on. Should I continue? Mm -hmm. Which he worked in Christ mm -hmm. when he raised him. From the dead, mm -hmm. and seated him at his right hand mm -hmm. in the heavenly places, yeah. far above all principalities and power, mm -hmm. might and dominion, 
dominion, mm -hmm. and every name that is named, not only in this age, mm -hmm. but also in that which is to come. Mm -hmm. And he put all things under his feet, mm -hmm. and gave him to be head over all things mm -hmm. to the church, which is the body, mm -hmm. the fullness of him yeah. who fills all in all. Amen. Amen. So God has what? Two purposes. Again, let me go over that. God has a new one. Two things he wants to do. What does he want to do? He wants to create a people for himself. And what are the people that still want to create for himself? Patient people who are holy and blameless. We know that from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. Hallelujah. And if you go back to the Old Testament passages, it's also very clear. That God wants a people. What are the characteristics of these people? They must be what? Holy. And they must be what? Blameless. Amen. Amen. Second thing God wants to do is what? He wants to gather everything. So that who can be there with the head of us all? Jesus Christ. That's what God is up to. So when God is giving us dominion this year, when God is leading us in the path of recovery, patience, what is he trying to do? He's trying to reestablish his people for himself and he's trying to put everything under the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can I hear a big amen? Amen. amen? So how does God do this? In a redemptive, in redemptive dominion. How does God do this, Pastor Esther? Now, if you should tell us that we are sick of Christ where? In heavenly places. Now, I want some volunteers. I want to illustrate this so you can see. I want six people to come up. Everybody face that side. Now, I want to demonstrate for you what Christ did for us. What God. I want to tell you how that the three persons in the Godhead were all involved in our redemption. The reason why we call it redemptive dominion is because Christ was redeeming, God was redeeming us to himself. Now, let me illustrate this. Here is what I call seeker with Christ where? In the heavenly places. Right? This is what it called. This is, this is, this is the area we call seeker with God in the heavenly places. But how do we get there? How do we get there? We begin with Jesus Christ. This is Jesus Christ, right? And what did he do? What did Jesus do? Well, the Bible says Jesus' blood purchased our redemption. So in Jesus, we have two. Have you ever bought NyQuil and DayQuil? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. How do they look? They're the packaged what? Together, right? Yeah. So when you get Jesus, what do you get? You get NyQuil and DayQuil. Amen? Amen? And here is what happens. So when you get Jesus, you get redemption. Amen? Amen. But when redemption comes, what? The forgiveness of sin. Redemption is the NyQuil. Forgiveness of sin is the day quill. Amen. 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 Now there's another thing Jesus does. Now which will come to the door. He gave us inheritances. But we're not there yet. Amen. Amen. But when you get Jesus, what do you get? You get day quill and night quill. So this is Jesus. If I hit Jesus, what do I have now? I have, my, I have what? I have night quill and I have day quill. What do I have?